Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. And I'm Denise Rojas, and welcome to Green Power Science. Windmills, they've been around for centuries, and their design hasn't changed much over the years. And their design hasn't changed much over the years. <laughs> Stop making fun of me! That video, I got a lot of viewers. That's true, that video did very well. Well, anyways, today we're going to be showing you how to make your own vertical wind turbine. That's right. All you have to do is go to our website, greenpowerscience.com, go to the donate section, and uh, kindly donate $149.95. Dan? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> donate $49.95, and I will send you the plans. Of no, we're not. Go we're going to be doing it for free. Actually, we will be doing it for free. The, the only economy thing is bad, and we want to give everybody something to appreciate. Something to do yourself. The only thing that I want you to do is to be very careful because we're going to be using some power tools. Some of the techniques that we're going to show are advanced techniques. So if you're not familiar with table saws and miter saws, don't run out and buy one and try this stuff right away. Get some practice, um, read all the manuals, and if you know someone who's skilled with power tools and may be able to help you, that's a good option. Anyways, we're going to get started. We're going to be making a vertical wind turbine. The one that we're going to be making is about three foot at the, in diameter, and it's going to be roughly three and a half feet tall. Let's get started. All right. The first thing you want to do is start off with a nice clean sheet of plywood. This piece of plywood's 15, 30 seconds or just about a half of an inch thick. You don't want to go much thinner than that because you'll get warping. Now, this piece is eight foot long and it's about 30 inches wide, so we're going to do three 30 inch pieces. You need three for this turbine design. You can use a four by eight sheet of plywood, cut it in half, and you'll have two 48s to make a really large circle. So, but you do need three. Now, we're going to get cutting on this, and I'm going to show you how to cut a perfect circle, and we'll go from there. Let's do it. Okay, we have three pieces of plywood, approximately the same size per piece. These are not exact, but they're pretty close. Now, I've got a circle cutting technique. The video is actually right there. We'll go ahead and look at that video. I'm going to show you how to do that with this. The nice thing about that technique is you don't have to find the perfect center on this. You just have to be close so when you cut it, you don't run off the edge. So what we're going to do is measure roughly to the center. It doesn't have to be exact because the way that we do it, it ends up that drill hole that you put in ends up being in the perfect center. Now, to do this, I have several holes put in my table saw here, and a lot of people on the other video have kind of been, oh, you're drilling a hole in your table saw. It doesn't hurt it. You just don't want to drill on the side that the motor's on. Thirteen. Thirteen. Lucky thirteen holes. <laughs> I actually cut circles for neighbors and friends all day long, actually. They really like the, uh, the idea. The nice thing is, is you can cut them really fast. You don't have to put a hole in your table saw. You can set. You can also get a block of wood with a bolt on it like this and add it to your saw. A little tricky of a cut, but you can definitely do that. That way you don't drill holes in your table saw. We use this as a weight so we don't have to keep tightening the bolt up on the bottom like we did before. This just sits on there. He says we. We is he. We is me. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to do this real quick and we'll go from there. Sounds great. One thing that you want to get in the habit of doing anytime you're measuring is unplug your saw. That way, nothing stupid happens when your fingers are near the blade. Now, we're going to be doing a 30 inch circle because the wood that I have is 31 inches, so we don't want to cut larger than it is. These are all fixed holes at various uh, measurements. So, since you're going to be turning this, you want to double whatever this size is. So, we're, to get a 30 inch cut, we're going to need this set to 15 inches. Now, this outer one that's on here actually can be moved. The one thing that you want to make 100% sure of if you do use this out here is that you use something additional to clamp it down because even though these saws are pretty good, it can push in like that and if that happens while you're cutting, you may as well throw that piece of wood away. So we got to get this set to 15 inches and I'm just going to use some uh, pressure clamps to make sure that that doesn't slide in because it does that even with the clamp. Anyways, here we go. Right now what I've done is I've marked an X in the middle. This is roughly the center point. You don't have to be perfectly centered. Again, you just want to make sure you don't run off of the edge. We're going to take a quarter inch drill bit and we're going to come off to the edge of the table and I'm going to drill a hole right in the middle there. You got it, Denise? Sure do. All right, here we go. Now, 
Now this should drop right in there and you can see that that bolt comes right out of the bottom. Now all we do is put that on there. Here's the cool part. I'm gonna drop the blade all the way down. And you're gonna notice that this turns and if you can see the blade, then you're too short on one side. So this rotates all the way around like this. Now, for those of you not familiar with this uh, little trick, here you go. All right, I'm gonna make sure you have your safety goggles on and you definitely have to have a push stick. You never do this without a push stick. Basically, you put your blade all the way down and then you start to raise it till you hear it touching the wood. You don't wanna go too, fat, too deep because it'll actually start pulling this and then you just rotate against the blade. Gradually raise your blade each time you bring around the full 360 degree turn. So here it goes. And pretty easy. Take it out. Wow. And you can see we went right to the that edge on that so one. That is so cool to look at. So here is an absolutely perfect circle. You don't have to, there's other techniques that people have where they slide it back and forth and cut it about 800 times and put their fingers really close to the blade. I was never within a foot of the blade with my hands at any time. The only real danger with this is that you try to do too much at one time and the blade could actually start spinning this. If you go up slow, I'm going to show you what happens. The blade actually gradually because it's a flat blade so you there's no way that it's going to cut a circle so what it does is it gradually chips away the outer side so you start here it can do that it can do that it can do that you just work your way up it usually takes about four turns per half inch so we're going to do this two more times so we have three of these now once you have your first one done you can basically take the circle that way, you saw how close I came to that one edge. I was right on, like, I mean, another quarter inch. And then you, you just take something, mark your hole, and that's where you're gonna drill your center hole. So once you have one done, you can use it as a guide for all the other ones. So we go right there. Smart. 